Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. This is another Thrift to Treasure video where I'll take four items and upcycle them for resale or for myself. So in these next few videos, you're definitely going to be seeing me throw in some stuff in for myself because from September to December, I'm crazy busy working on Christmas and orders and all that and things I want to do for myself always get neglected. So I'm going to be like sprinkling in a few things for me and the majority of stuff I own is thrifted. So it fits in perfectly to these videos. And if this is the kind of stuff you like, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I post these videos every single week. All right. So this is just like something small, but I am like ready to get all my stuff done that I've been collecting and laying around. I don't even know where these things came from. I'm pretty sure they probably came from like a percolator or something like that, but we're gonna make them cute because somebody needs this in their house. So I also have these little pegs that somebody gave to me. So I'm thinking we're gonna use that. And then these little pegs that I guess came from like, um, you know, one of those like chair rails or something over cabinets this used to be so popular my parents had these in their house so i know exactly what it is so with these items that were probably basically free we're gonna make something super cute it's not gonna be a high margin item but we we can't throw it away we got to do something with it right so then if you have these items laying around you'll know exactly what to do with them or if you see them and want to pick them up you can okay you'll know what to do with them Next, y'all know I have a thing for baskets. Can't pass up a good basket. Actually, somebody bought this and uh, dropped it off at my house. They, I have people that now when they're out garage sailing, since I don't get to go that often, when they see something I might like, they just go ahead and pick it up for me. We gotta save all the junk, y'all. Um, so I actually really like these because they're very like see-through and I think they look so cute stacked up on top of each other even if you didn't put anything in them i think they look really cute like this so of course we're going to give these a paint job make them look cute i'm going to spend as little time as possible on these because i'm not going to sell them for a lot so quick flip can't spend a lot of money on them get it done get it out the door that's the goal okay the next two items is going to be things for myself so i have this hallway it's one of my most favorite places in my house. I know in modern design, like hallways are wasted space, but y'all, I just love a good hallway. So I've already done a lot to this space and I recently just painted the whole thing white. So I have the shiplap, like Wayne's cotting at the bottom. And then I had like this beautiful dark blue grayish color at the top. It was beautiful and I enjoyed it for three years, but Y'all, white just makes my heart skip a beat. And so I just recently painted the whole hallway white. It's very light, very bright, I absolutely love it. But when you paint everything white, you need to bring some warmth back in. You can't just paint everything white and not decorate. So I think the best way to bring warmth in is greenery and blues and greens. And my friend was selling this picture on Facebook and when I saw it, I just had to have it. It is a known artist and I, it does go for pretty good money, but I paid $20 for it and I'm not selling it. But look how beautiful it is. Like it looks like a little cabin next to a creek. Let's see, where is the signature? I'll add in a smaller picture of signature because I don't even know how to say his name. But this frame is absolutely gorgeous. It's thick and chunky the way I love it but I feel like it's an outdated look. It just stands out too much in my hallway. So we're gonna kind of like fix up this frame so it fits a little bit better into my hallway. And then, um, so over the door that goes into my garage, I want to make a sign for me, which never happens. So we're gonna make one of my good old fashioned signs to put at the end of my hallway. I have a saying in mind that, <laughs> I think would just be perfect for this area. So I hope y'all enjoy this video and let's go ahead and get started. Oh my God. Can y'all hear all the, uh, the birds and stuff in the water? The pelicans are going crazy right now behind me. All right, let's get started. For this project, I'm using my Gorilla Glue Clear Grip Adhesive. You can find this in the 
craft section at Walmart. And then these little spindles had some nails in them. So I'm just pulling them out. And then next, I'm going to glue them to the pieces. So I'm not gonna nail them in or anything. For this small project, this glue will work perfectly fine. So for the bigger one, I wanna just put three spindles on it. And I decided not to use those little pegs. It just didn't look all right. And I really want these pieces to be a set. So what I decided to do was put two of the spindles together because I really wanted some taller legs on the smaller one. So I put two spindles together and then I'm going to attach that to the bottom to make a longer leg. Now the plan was to put this all together and paint it white and then distress the whole piece. But once I had it all together, I really liked it in its natural state and just decided to keep it that way. I get my succulents from the Dollar Tree. They're a nice size, but I find the paint color is always a little fake looking. So I like to paint them with this color. It is called Dark and Stormy Green Sky. It is from Walmart. And I actually had this color in my master bathroom in the toilet room, and it was absolutely gorgeous. But also, when I painted my hallway white, I went ahead and repainted my toilet room white because, like I said, I just really love white. I'm glad I tried out colors because sometimes you need to try out different styles to see what you really love. And I love to decorate, so I just like having a nice neutral palette to work with. So I'm just going to put one light coat on here. That way some of that other color kind of shines through. And then you have different colors going on, which adds dimension and makes it look even more realistic. So you don't have to get this color. You could just look for like a dark green in the craft section. Just some acrylic paint would be fine but I have this paint color, so this is what I use, and I really like it, it looks really pretty. And I wanna do like a little bit of the back, just in case you'll be able to see some of that. I'm just gonna go ahead and get the whole thing painted so I don't have to go back and do anything. And that just totally transforms the look of it and makes this $1 succulent look super expensive. Once the glue is dry, I'm gonna add the succulents to the pieces. The small one, all I'm gonna do is place the succulent in. Perfect, not even gonna glue it. And then for the bigger one, I'm gonna add some rocks and then add the succulents. I, I decided to go ahead with three succulents in this one. And y'all, I swear I wasn't planning on keeping this one, but they look so good in my house. I love them so much. the frame Greek Villa. It is actually my ceiling color and it is a few shades lighter than my wall color. I picked something on the same color palette. And so I think this will tie in nicely to my wall, but just be a little bit lighter than my wall color. And this is a nice flat paint since it's a ceiling paint. And I don't think I'm gonna go for full coverage. I'm gonna do one coat and see how it looks because I don't mind it having like a few of these other colors, like a little bit of this gold and a little bit of this blue coming through for a more distressed look. But um, I definitely want to brighten up this frame. So I'm gonna have to be really careful. I got my good Wooster angle brush to use here to try to really get into the corners without touching the canvas, because that would not be good. I'm trying to use a brush and smooth out my brush strokes as much as possible. You want to do long, smooth strokes. And I did end up doing just one coat on here. I felt like it was perfect because you could kind of still see some of the colors underneath. So it gave it, you know, a little bit of an aged look, but the white just brightened it up. I think if I would have did a nice clean coat on here, then it wouldn't have gone with 
the painting. It would look like two separate pieces, you know what I mean? And now I'm going back and just with a wet napkin, I'm just rubbing on where that gold was. So that way a little bit more of that gold peeks through and then it looked perfect. To paint this piece, I'm going to use my paint sprayer. It is filled with Rust-Oleum chalk paint. Now, I do not take the paint out. I do not clean this after each use. What I do before I spray is a, this paint sprayer comes with a little bristle brush and I just clean off the tip of the sprayer and it works perfectly fine. I haven't had a problem. I've had this sprayer for, I don't even remember how long. It's been a long time. I'm just going to do one clean coat on these and then let it dry. And then I'm going to take a very smooth grit sandpaper and just use my orbital sander to distress these. Sometimes I distress them and then come back and wet distress them with a wet paper towel, but the sander perfectly distressed these. So luckily I didn't have to do that. This project was super quick and easy, just the way that I like it. Now, if you have a softer basket, you probably do not want to use an orbital sander on it. But since this one was like made of like hard wood, it was fine. The first step in making a sign is to figure out the size that you want. So I have my customers measure their space and give me an approximate size of what they want. Since this is in my house, I'm measuring my space. And this little like mini blind window thing on my door, I feel like is the perfect length, which it ended up being two feet. So I'll make the sign two feet and then two fence boards together is one foot. So it's gonna be two feet by one foot. Next, I'm gonna design the sign on my computer. Now I can make my page the size of the piece. So this page is two feet by one foot. I have a professional design program called Adobe Illustrator. I'm sorry, Adobe InDesign. And it is very expensive, but if you have a cheaper option, please share it with our Facebook group so other people can try to do this. I don't know what a better option is. This is just what I personally have and I use, and I'm using the font called Collection Free. I absolutely love this font. It is like beautiful and scripty, and it's just more like artwork instead of like a graphic sign. You know what I mean? And then I print it out on a regular sheet of paper on my black and white laser printer. When I'm using wood that I know I'm gonna be drawing on, I try to pick a, a piece that is as smooth as possible. I'm also gonna be sanding this down and once you add paint to it, that also smooths it out even more. But when you can start off with a smooth surface already, that's just the best way to go. It's gonna give you less problems in the long run. And I also try to use the same piece of wood for the whole sign if possible. That way the texture is the same. You don't have like a bumpy piece and then a smooth piece, you know what I'm saying? So try to use the same type of wood throughout your entire piece if you're gonna put pieces of wood together like we will for this sign. I'm gonna cut off the end that I don't want. Then I'm gonna measure my board. I need a two foot board. I'm gonna cut that. And then I'm gonna use that piece to measure my next piece. That way I know both pieces are the exact same size. Okay, I just got a new glue bot, so I figured I'd show it to y'all. Most of the stuff I use, I keep in my Amazon store, which is in the link in the description below. And so it comes already put together and all you gotta do is add your wood glue. I buy it by the gallon and then keep my glue bot full. And then 
So I like to put my boards together, how they're gonna look on the front just to make sure there's no big cracks and everything looks good. Then I turn them over and I nail them together. I'm just using some quarter inch plywood. Oh, I forgot you gotta cut off the top. <laughs> I was trying to get the glue out and it wouldn't come off. So you just cut the top to whatever size you want. If you want a lot of glue to come out or a little, I'm using a quarter inch plywood that I cut down um, into strips to put my boards together. And then I'm using my nail gun to nail them down. Okay, so since this is my sign, I am actually using my wall paint, which is Sherwin-Williams White Duck. And once I distress it, it's gonna like look a little different than my wall color, but I don't want this sign to stand out too much. I just want it to look like a pretty piece of art that perfectly blends in with everything I already have in my hallway. Once the paint is dry, I'm gonna distress a piece. I don't like my signs heavily distressed. I like to hit the edges and then sand the middle and just smooth out the paint and then pull up, a, like a little bit of paint comes up, but not too, too much. I don't like my signs overly distressed. And then I'm going to tape down my template to the wood. That way it doesn't move as I'm tracing it. And I'm gonna use carbon paper and just trace over the paper and this will transfer it on to the wood. And then once you pull it up, you'll see you have an outline to work with. So I'm gonna take my painter's pen. You can get these at Walmart. I'm using this one because it has a very fine tip. And like I said, I don't want this sign to be very graphic. I just want it to be a very pretty sign. So I want a very thin font. Once I have all the words on, I'm going to frame this piece out. Now, to make a frame, what I do is I cut down fencing on my table saw. So I have a bunch of these piled up onto the side, ready to use whenever I want to frame out a piece. I cut up two pieces on my miter saw. I'm gonna sand them down and then I'm gonna add the Waverly Antiquing Wax water mixture that y'all have seen me do a bunch of times before. That way, if I'm using different pieces of wood, it all blends together on the frame. And now I'm going to attach the top piece and the bottom piece using my nail gun. I like to do the top and the bottom first, attach them before I measure the sides. For me, that's the most accurate way to get a measurement. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and please leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite project that I worked on today.